Sometimes I like to turn mine on, sometimes I like to turn mine off, so no judgment either way. And then just find a comfortable seat on your mat. So I'm gonna turn to face you guys, but you can just face forward. And then as always, just take a moment, move around a little bit. So just kind of stretching, exploring, rolling out your neck, your shoulders. So after sleeping all night long, a lot of times we wake up with just little, I don't want to say aches and pains, but at least sensation in our body that we can kind of notice. So just start to tune into that as you get these little wiggles out. And then when you're ready, just sit in stillness. Close your eyes. Rest your hands on your lap, or if you want, you can bring your hands to your heart, or even one hand to your heart space, one hand to your belly. And take these first couple moments to just bring in a deeper awareness. A deeper awareness of yourself and how you are. And then even just this moment right here, right now. So notice sounds, smells, the temperature around you, the ground underneath you. So allow yourself to really arrive here in the present moment. And then let's tune into our breath. So next time you breathe in, breathe in as big as you can and then hold at the very top. And when you think you're full, sip in just a little bit more and exhale big open mouth sigh let it go <sighs> do that two more times so inhale fill up hold in fullness take a moment keep holding and as you hold see if you can relax around your held breath and big open mouth sigh to release <sighs> One more time. So biggest inhale you've taken all morning long. Just wake up your body from the inside with this breath. Hold at the top. And when you're ready, open mouth side, let it go. Now start to cultivate your ujjayi breath. So in and out through your nose. Gentle constriction in the back of your throat. And start to not just feel your breath as it moves through you, but see if you can also hear it. So start to create that oceanic sound with your breath, that Darth Vader breath. So putting just a gentle effort behind it. Then stay here just in your seated meditation for as long as you want to. And when you feel ready to move, Go ahead and take your breath with you. Come forward to your hands and your knees. So from hands and knees, just like we always do, intuitive movement. Big circles with your hips. Maybe child's pose. Maybe cat cows. Maybe wrist stretches. So, so many places you can go. Get as creative, as intuitive as you want to. You might lift up to your fingertips, maybe bend your elbows, move your chest to the ground. So I always used to say this, and I feel like I haven't said it in a long time. This is instinctual movement. So imagine you are a four-legged creature of some sort and you're trying to figure out how can I move my body all the different ways in which your body can move. That's what you're trying to figure out here. So feel into your spine, feel into the mobility in your shoulders and your elbows, feel into your hips. 
So if you've ever watched even just your dog, if you have a dog or a dog, move their body, downward facing dog, it comes really naturally for them. That's how they're stretching, upward facing dog, same thing. So feel into your body. What does your body want? What does your body need just naturally? So I feel like in our culture, it becomes this really almost, I don't know, just an uncomfortable thing to move our bodies intuitively. It feels weird because we're not used to doing it. It feels strange because it's not maybe quote unquote normal, but this is your yoga. So close your eyes and just move in whatever way feels good to you. Absolutely no judgment. And then please no rush. So take as much time here as you want to. This is honestly my favorite part of practice usually. So take as much time as you'd like. And then when you're ready, we'll see you back in downward facing dog. So get there in your own time, maybe even in your own way. So if you want to take a vinyasa, if you want to take hovering tabletop with your knees hovering above the ground for a moment, anything that works for you. And then once you're in your down dog, pretty much the same thing. Just explore. So tune in, feel your fingers on the ground as they grip. So really grip through the pads of your fingertips like you're a gecko holding onto a screen door. And then stay rooted through all 10 fingertips. But see if you can rotate your shoulders out away from your ears. Now as your shoulders rotate out, don't let your thumbs and your index fingers lift up. So keep pressing down firmly. Now can you find a connection to your center as well? So that lift coming from your center, that invisible rope that's attached to your belly button, it's pulling up, it's tugging back. You can pedal out your heels, shake your head yes or no. Shift your weight from side to side. So just feeling into your down dog and then breathe into your down dog. Notice whatever there is to notice. And then when you make those little <clears throat> when you notice those little things, is there a way you want to adjust or respond in your own body? So this is just so much a practice that comes from within. So I can give you all the cues in the world, but it's up to you to find them in your body. It's up to you to make those little teeny tiny adjustments that feel right for you today. So let's take just one more big deep breath into our down dog. And at the end of your exhale, just slowly crawl your hands back to the back of your yoga mat until you find yourself in a forward fold. <clears throat> so feet about hips width distance apart or maybe even a little bit wider, all 10 toes face forward. Inhale to a halfway lift, spinal extension. And then pause here, bend your left knee a lot, left fingertips to the ground underneath your chest, right arm to the sky. So twist from your center, stay rooted through the inner edge of your right foot, and then imagine you wanna pull your right hip back. Spine long, crown of your head reaches forward as your right butt cheek pulls back. Reach up like you wanna touch the ceiling with your right fingertips, take one more in breath, Stay for your exhale, twist a little further, and then end of your exhale, let it go, and switch to the other side. So right fingertips on the ground, right knee bends a lot, left arm to the sky, twist. So root through the inner edge of your left foot as you pull your left hip back, working the length in your left leg. Keep the length in your spine, and then reach up as high as you can. Soft through your face, unclench your jaw. Take one more big inhale, see if you can lengthen everything a little more. Stay as you exhale, twist just a little further. End of your exhale, release, forward fold, and you choose either ragdoll pose or hands behind your head, interlace your fingers. So 
Give yourself just a moment here. Maybe you want to sway from side to side. Perhaps bob a little bit up and down. You can have a little or a big bend in your knees. Keep your weight primarily in the front half of your feet. So your heels are on the ground, but there's not a ton of weight there. Lift your butt up, lift your belly button up. So still you've got that invisible rope attached to your belly button. It's lifting up towards the ceiling or up towards the sky. Take one more round. End of your exhale, release your elbows. As slow as you can go, roll up to stand one vertebra at a time. <clears throat> so nice and easy, take it up. Arms and head hang heavy. And then once your head stacks, roll out your shoulders. So a few rolls, big exaggerated movement. So it, it, um, incorporate your arms and kind of bend your elbows a little bit as you roll your shoulders back. And then next time you roll your shoulders back and down, stay there, palms face forward. So standing in mountain pose with so much awareness, so much attention and intention. And close your eyes for a moment, root down through the soles of your feet, draw up through the crown of your head. Neutral pelvis, so if your pelvis is neutral, then automatically you should feel that little tiny tone of your lowest, deepest abdominals. Heart is open, shoulders are slightly open. Let's take one big inhale, stay as you are, but breathe in as big as you can, hold at the top. And when you're ready, big open mouth, sigh, release. Ah. All right, ujjayi breath, here we go. Inhale, high mountain, stretch tall. Exhale, slow swan dive. So take it all the way down, then fold in. Halfway lift as you breathe in, exhale, fold. Now this time, crawl your hands to the top of your mats, plank position, pause here, top of a push-up. So spread your fingers wide and press the ground away. Breathe into your back body as you draw navel to spine. Take one more inhale and exhale, downward facing dog. So just lift your hips and press them back. Maybe you bend your knees a lot. Inhale, come forward to your high plank. See if you can come way, way forward so you're on your tippy, tippy toes. Exhale, from your center, take it back. So belly button lifts up, hips press back, spine lengthens. This time, inhale, high plank. Come to your knees if you wanna modify. Exhale, halfway down, slow motion push up. Inhale, press back up, and exhale, downward facing dog. Do that once more. Inhale, high plank position. Exhale, chaturanga hold. So strong arms, strong belly. Inhale, press back up, high plank. Exhale, takes you back to down dog. Inhale, this time come forward. Exhale as slow as you can all the way to your belly. Ha. All right, let's take our Spider-Man Cobra. So hands out nice and wide. Lift your fingertips, elbows face the sky. Inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, take your twist to the right and dip your left shoulder down. Inhale, back to center, heart lifts. Exhale, other side. So right shoulder dips down as you twist to your left. Inhale, come back up. Tone your belly, lift your heart. Exhale, let it go. Let's rise up just to hands and knees. So bring your hands to frame your mid ribs. Press up to your tabletop. Okie dokie. From your tabletop, spinal balance. So right arm forward and left leg back. So straight, strong, powerful line of energy. Rather than arching your spine and creating kind of a smiley face shape from, the, uh, from your fingertips to your toes, just think of strong, straight, powerful line. Good. Breathe down into your low back as you draw your belly button towards your spine. Take one more big inhale. Pull yourself apart. 
Slow motion movement, elbow to knee underneath you. Curl in, round, hollow out. <sighs> Inhale, re-extend. Try not to let go through your belly, so strong straight line. Now listen, zigzag, exhale, right arm to the right, left leg to the left. Hold here for a full round. Bend your elbow or your knee if you want to modify. Lift higher, reach further. Inhale, come back to center. So forward and back, breathe in. Exhale one more time, elbow to knee, curl in. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, set your right hand down, pivot on your right knee so your right foot comes to the outside of your yoga mat like a little kickstand and then left arm reaches up for your modified side plank. So squeeze through your outer right butt cheek, press your hips forward, so try not to stick your butt out behind you. And then reach your left arm towards the top edge of your mat or past the top edge of your mat, lengthen your left side. Breathe into your left side. Take one more big inhale. Exhale, option to bind, bend your left knee, reach back, grab hold of your left foot. Once you've got that, start to kick foot into hand, pull hand back into foot. Maybe rotate your heart to look up at the sky. Breathe down into your low belly. Soften your face. Allow your heart to open and feel that opening. Take one more great big huge breath wherever you're at. And then end of your exhale, nice job you guys. Slowly release, come back to hands and knees. And then from your hands and your knees, bring just your right forearm down. So like you're going into a dolphin pose with your right arm. Scoot your left hand back about a foot or so, and then bring your left hand out a little bit wider towards the left edge of your mat. So think chaturanga with your left arm or push up with your left arm. See if you can get your shoulders even. So if I were there looking at you from the front, your shoulders would be straight across from one another. Notice if your left shoulder is kind of rolling forward, left shoulder blade hugs your spine. So roll your left shoulder back and down. Now everybody relax your neck. As you are ready, tuck your toes under, press down through your forearm, press down through your left hand, lift your hips. Dolphin strut, or I just call this one arm dolphin. So really pressing through your right forearm. Try not to sink into your right shoulder. And then left arm stays strong like you're doing a little push up. Shoulders straight across from one another. Don't let your left shoulder roll forward. See if you can lift higher through your hips. So maybe walk your toes in a little closer. Stay where you are or take your right leg to the sky. Lift from your center, from your belly button. Feel that connection there. Take three more rounds in your expression of this pose. Soften through your face. Unclench your jaw. Good work, my friends. Last round. You can exhale out your mouth anytime. End of your exhale, right foot to the ground, knees to the ground. Now listen, we're going to sit back into screaming toe pose. So knees about hips width distance apart, lift your upper body and sit your hips back on top of your heels. Toes are tucked under. If having your toes tucked under, I'll take my socks off so you can see my feet a little bit easier. So toes are tucked under. If that's too much, you wanna untuck them and just take a regular hero's pose, that's fine. So, Hips rest on your heels, spine long. Breathe. You can stay here or option to let your right ear just fall down towards your right shoulder. And then reach your left arm out to the left and down towards the ground and then slightly back behind you. Stay here or Right hand to the left side of your head, right above your left ear. Don't pull, just gently encourage your head a little bit further to the right. And as you just gently press into your head with your hand, ever so gently press back up into your hand with your head. Feel that stretch in the left side of your neck. 
And some of you, if you're just in regular screaming toe pose, feel that heat building in your feet. Everybody, just big deep breaths, three more. Soften your face. If you're taking that neck stretch, make sure you're not tensing up through your neck and your face. Relax. Good job, my friends. Last round. And of your exhale, everything releases. So arms release, head comes back to center. And then go ahead and come forward to hands and knees. Untuck your toes. You can give your feet that little pitter-patter tap against the ground. And then if you did take the next stretch while we were in screaming toe, then from hands and knees, just let your head drop down and shake it side to side just gently. All right, when you're ready, downward facing dog. From your dog pose, inhale, take your right leg to the sky. So pause here for a moment. Inner thighs face each other. Hips are square. Press up with your right foot and then press down through your hands. Lift from your center, from your belly button. So is there any way you can create just a little more space, just a little more length here? Is your right leg strong and powerful? So make it so strong that if I were there with you and I tried to press your right leg down, it wouldn't even move. It's so powerful. Take one more big inhale. Exhale as slow as you can. Step your right foot forward. Keep your hips as high as possible the entire time. Then once your right foot is on the ground, you're in a low lunge position. We're going to, today, rise up to warrior one, which I rarely ever teach, but today, feeling it. So back heel pivots down. Your back foot is at about a 30 degree angle. Rise up when you're ready. So one of the most common misalignments in warrior one is people want to point their left toes straight out to the left. So once you do that, your hip opens to the left. So we don't want that. Point your left toes slightly out to the left, slightly forward, and then have the intention of squaring off your hips. So right hip pulls back, left hip pulls forward. Tone your low belly, lift your heart, lengthen your side bodies, and reach through your fingertips. Where's your breath? Feel it. Let's take one more big inhale here. And then as you exhale, hands behind your back, interlace your fingers. Roll your shoulders back and down and hug your shoulder blades towards your spine. If it is available to you, start to reach your hands back away from your body. And then maybe knuckles down as your heart lifts up. Wherever you're at, one more big inhale. Now keep your hands clasped. Exhale, humble warrior. So bow to the inside of your right knee, right shoulder towards the inside of your right knee. Chin to chest, navel to spine. Your back can round, but then lift your knuckles as high as possible. Feel that opening in the fronts of your shoulders. If your right knee is falling inward, press more into the outer edge of your right foot. Try to keep wrapping your right butt cheek underneath you as much as you can. Back leg strong, root through your back foot. See if you can dive just a little deeper, take two more breaths. Maybe you bend deeper into your front knee. So soften through your face. Last round here, you guys. End of your exhale, hands to your low back. Release your clasp as you rise up, warrior one. So reach up. Now exhale, hands to your front thigh, lean forward a little bit, bring your weight more into your right foot, and then slowly pick your back leg up for warrior three. So once you've got your back leg lifted, really square off your hips, inner thighs face each other, press your hands into your front thigh, lengthen your spine, breathe into your low back. So think of puffing up through your low back. Stay here or take your right arm forward. So left leg is back, right arm is reaching forward. 
Take one more big inhale, pull yourself apart. Now listen, this is crazy. Exhale, right arm reaches to the right, left leg reaches to the left, zigzag. Bend your elbow or your knee to modify. Take a full round of breath. See if you can lift higher. Now inhale, come back to center, reach out long. Exhale, low lunge. So step your left toes to the back of your mat. Bring your hands to the ground. Let's bring our back knee down gently. If you need extra cushion, use it under your back knee. And then we'll take half splits, half Hanumanasana. So you can stick with a half screaming toe pose, left toes tucked under and then hips back to your left heel as you straighten your front leg. Or if you wanna keep your hips up higher, more over your left knee, that's perfectly fine. You might need to walk your right foot forward a little bit. So everybody straighten your front leg as much as you can, flex your right toes back, press down through your right heel, and then energetically with your right heel, rather than pushing forward, pull back towards your body. You can have your fingertips on the ground, hands on blocks, books, water bottles, stay more upright, or if you would like to take it deeper, fold. So drape your torso over your front leg. Imagine you want to reach your heart past your knee and then forehead towards your shin. Keep pulling your right butt cheek energetically back. So it's like you want to stick your right butt cheek way out behind you. Each exhalation, navel to spine lock, Uddiyana Bandha. From that place, see if you can go just a little bit deeper into your pose. Press down through the back of your right heel and energetically pull back. Take about two more breaths. Good job, you guys. End of your next exhale, release that and let's come forward to a low lunge position again. So adjust however you need to to get to your low lunge. Tuck your back toes, lift your back knee. Now listen, three-legged down dog. So take your right leg all the way back and up. Open your right hip, bend your right knee, squeeze your outer right butt cheek. So feel this nice opening through the front of your hips, that stretch in your groin perhaps. Take one more big inhale. Now exhale, right knee, left elbow, or as close as you can come. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, right knee, right elbow, or aim for your armpit, aim higher. Out of push-up if you want, bend your elbows, don't let your butt drop. Inhale, three-legged dog. Last one, knee to your nose, scoop out your belly. Step your right foot to the top of your mat. Step your left foot to the top of your mat, forward fold. Here we are. All right, inhale to a halfway lift. Exhale, let it go. Now listen, walk your feet out to the width of your yoga mat. Bring your toes out wider than your heels. So heels in, toes out, malasana, low squat. Keep your heels on the ground if at all possible. And then elbows to your inner knees or your inner thighs. Broaden through the fronts of your shoulders. Hands either to your heart. If you want a bigger challenge, if this is a really natural and easy position for you then press your palms together and bring your arms up overhead try not to round your back got about three deep breaths breathe all the way down into your hips heels on the ground see if you can pick up your toes spread them last round end of your exhale just plant your hands step your feet to the back of your yoga mat plank position pause in your plank pose vashi stasana side plank so right hand is your base roll onto the baby toe edge of your right foot or if you want to modify you're more than welcome to bring your right knee down for another modified side plank perfectly fine if you're not modifying, then your hips are lifted really, really high. Reach your left arm forward, lengthen your left side body. Maybe float your left leg up. As you do so, see if you can now lift your hips even higher. 
Soften your face, soften your outer body, your outer shell. Give it one more round. End of your exhale, back to your plank position. Inhale at the top, come to your knees if you wanna modify. Exhale, slowly lower. Spider-Man Cobra, bring your hands out wide, lift to your fingertips, elbows face the sky, lift your chest. And then you'll probably keep this one a little bit lower. So lower down if you need to. Bend your right knee, press into your right set of fingertips, and then roll to the outside of your left hip. So reach your right tiptoes towards the ground behind you. And then you can kind of dip your left shoulder down if you want to create a deeper stretch there. Maybe reach your right tiptoes further up towards your left hand. Take one more big deep breath. End of your exhale. Let it go and we'll just switch to the other side. So right leg is straight now, left knee bends. Scorpion tail with your left leg, roll into the outside of your right hip. Let your right shoulder move closer to the ground. Big breath down into your belly. Left toes closer to your right hand if you want to take it a little deeper. Last round. And then end of your exhalation. Let it go. Lower down. We'll meet in tabletop position. So hands frame your mid ribs. Press up to hands and knees. All right. From hands and knees, let's move into our spinal balance. Left arm forward, right leg back this time. So again, remember, we're not going for a smiley face shape. We're going for a strong, straight, powerful line. Draw your belly button in and up and puff up your low back. So it almost feels like you're rounding your low back just a little bit, but then your upper and your mid back stay nice and long. Take one more big inhale, pull yourself apart. Exhale, elbow to knee, move in slow motion. Inhale, re-extend. And then remember, you've got your zigzag. So exhale, left arm left, right leg right. Bend your elbow or your knee or both to modify. See if you can lift higher, hold for a full breath. Reach further. Inhale, come back to center, forward and back. Reach long. And then one more time, elbow to knee. Curl and hollow out. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, set just your left hand on the ground. Pivot on your left knee so your left foot comes to the outside of your mat like a little kickstand. Right arm reaches up, modified side plank. Squeeze your outer left butt cheek. Press your hips forward. Now, if you want to stay here, you're welcome to. Otherwise, right arm reaches towards the top edge of your mat, past the top edge of your mat. So create so much length in your right side. Stay here or option to bind if you'd like. Bend your right knee. Grab hold of your right foot. And once you've got that hold, start to work it. Kick foot in the hand. Spread your toes. Pull hand back in the foot. Allow your heart to open. Shoulders open. Breathe down into your belly. Take one last great big deep breath, fullest expression, and of your exhale, release, unwind, hands and knees. And then from hands and knees, just your left forearm to the ground, and scoot your right hand back about a foot or so. Bring your right hand out towards the right edge of your mat a little bit more. So get your shoulders straight across from one another, nice and even. If I was gazing at you from the front, shoulders are straight across from each other. And then make sure your right shoulder isn't rolling forward and collapsing. So right shoulder blades, hugs towards your spine. You feel really strong. Press down through your left forearm. Press down through your right hand. Relax your neck. Now tuck your toes. Lift your knees, lift your hips, dolphin strut. This is from forest yoga, or I just like to call it one arm dolphin. Relax your neck, let your head be heavy. It shouldn't be touching the ground. So if it is, that probably means you're not engaging enough through your arms. Press down through the belly of your left forearm. 
Keep your right arm strong and powerful like you're doing a push-up. Now, option to take your left leg to the sky. Press up with your left foot. You've got about three more deep breaths. Lift from your center. Soften your outer body, your outer shell. Soften around the pose. Strong arms connected to your belly. Last big breath. Ah, nice work you guys. End of your exhale, left foot to the ground, knees to the ground. Knees about hips width distance apart. And then we'll sit back into screaming toe pose. So toes are still curled under as you sit your hips back on your heels. Don't let your heels drift out to the sides. Keep hugging your inner heels towards midline. You can either just rest your hands on your lap, breathe here, or let your left ear fall towards your left shoulder. And then reach your right arm out to the right, down towards the ground, and just slightly back behind you. Stay here or take your left hand to the right side of your head, right above your ear, and ever so gently press your hand into your head, press your head back into your hand. Wherever you feel the most sensation, whether it's your feet or your neck, maybe both. Breathe into those spaces. Take about two or three more rounds. If it becomes too much and you need to come out a little bit early, that's fine. Please listen to your body first always. Big deep breaths. Relax your face. Relax your jaw. Last round. And then end of your exhale. Everything lets go. So arms by your sides. Lift your head up. And then take it forward, hands and knees. Tap the tops of your feet ever so gently against the ground, that pitter-patter tap. And then if you took the next stretch, let your head just hang for a moment. Either shake it, yes and no, or if it would feel good to you, you can take just little circles with your head. So staying very gentle, you're kind of circling your head around. And then when you are ready, maybe you reverse those circles. When you're ready, we'll meet in downward facing dog. Reconnect to your big, strong Ujjayi breath. Next time you inhale, left leg to the sky. Hips square, inner thighs face each other. Press up with your left foot and make your left leg really straight and really powerful. Press down through your hands and then see if you can lift a little bit higher from your belly button. How much length can you create from your fingertips all the way up to your left heel or your left toes? Take one more big inhale. Keep your hips as high as you can. As you exhale, slowly step your left foot through. So hips stay high as you step forward. Good job. We'll take our warrior one again. So back heel pivots down. And I didn't say this last time, but I like my feet on two railroad tracks or two skis, not on a balance beam. Rise when you're ready. Virabhadrasana one. So right toes. They are not directly out to the right. They're slightly forward and slightly out to the right, about a 30 degree angle. And then left hip pulls back, right hip works forward. And even imagine your right inner thigh wants to spiral in and then rotate up towards the ceiling. Tone your belly, lift your heart, reach through your fingertips. Take one more inhale, exhale, bring your hands behind your back, interlace your fingers. This time, switch them to one finger over, so it's your non-habitual way of clasping. 
Now roll your shoulders back and down to start. Stay here if you want to. If this is about it for you, that's perfectly fine. Stay here. If you can, hands start to reach back and then maybe add just a little baby back bend. Lift your heart up, reach your knuckles down. Take one more big inhale. Hands stay clasp, humble warrior, exhale. So left shoulder towards the inside of your left knee. Press into the outer edge of your left foot so that your left knee tracks towards your pinky toe rather than falling and collapsing inward. Stay rooted through your back foot, strong through your back leg. Lift from your belly button, chin to chest, navel to spine. Each exhale, dive a little bit deeper. See if you can keep reaching your knuckles up towards the ceiling. If it's too much, you can rest your hands on your low back instead. Breathe, you guys, bigger, deeper breaths, fire it up. Let's take one more inhale. Exhale, hands to your low back, rise up, and as you rise, release your clasp, arms to the sky. Exhale, bring your hands down to your front thigh, lean forward, root into your left foot, and when you're ready, back leg floats up, warrior three. So, Hip square, inner thighs face each other. Take a moment to adjust if you need to. Back leg is strong and powerful. Press with your back foot. This is where you can stay if you would like. Otherwise, keep pressing your right hand into your left thigh. Take your left arm forward. So left arm forward, right leg back. Pull yourself apart. One more big inhale. Exhale, zigzag. Left arm goes left, right leg goes right. Bend your elbow or your knee or both if you want to modify full breath. Good work. Inhale, bring it back to center. Lengthen out. Yippee. And then exhale, low lunge. Right toe step back, hands to the ground. Good job, my friends. Bring your right knee down gently. Extra cushion if you need it. Grab it. And then let's take our half splits, half Hanumanasana. So, Half screaming toe pose with your right foot, hips back to your heels, or, or hips back to your heel, I should say, or you can keep your hips kind of stacked over your back knee a little bit more. Less intensity on your back toes and your back foot. Front leg straight, or as straight as you can get it, and then left toes flex back towards your left shin. Hands on the ground or on blocks, books, water bottles, any props you have at home. You can stay a little more upright. Or if you want to take it deeper, work with a fold. So as you pull your left hip back, like you're trying to stick your left butt cheek way out behind you, reach your heart forward. Like you want to reach your heart all the way past your knee and then forehead towards your shin. Take about three or four more deep breaths here. Use your exhales to work a little bit further, whatever that looks like or feels like in your body. You've got one last breath. All right, let's take it back to a low lunge. So adjust in whatever way you need to to get back to your low lunge position. And then tuck your back toes, lift your back knee. Three-legged down dog. So left leg to the sky, stretch it out. Open up your left hip, bend your left knee, squeeze through your outer left butt cheek. Flex your left toes. So take a moment to feel this nice stretch here, this big opening in your hips. Take one more inhale, see if you can lift your left knee a little higher. And then with your exhale, left knee, right elbow. So your little twist. Get as close as you can. Inhale, three-legged down dog. Exhale, left to left, as high as you can get on your arm. Add a little push-up if you want to. Inhale, three-legged dog. And knee to your nose, so hips stay high. Scoop out your belly. Step your left foot forward. Step your right foot forward, forward fold. 
Inhale to a halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Walk your feet out to the width of your mat. Toes come out wider than your heels. Malasana, low yogi squat. So if possible, heels stay down. Maybe even pick up your toes, spread them. Hands at your heart, or if you want more, press your palms together and reach your arms to the sky. Don't let your back round. Breathe. I like to visualize my breath moving down into my hips, my groin, just creating space there. Take about two more rounds. Nice work, my friends. Ah. All right, from here, we're going to plant our hands. Step your feet to the back of your mat one at a time, plank pose. And then we've got our side plank, Vashistasana, left hand is your base this time. Roll onto the baby toe edge of your left foot and reach your right arm to the sky, lift your hips. If you want to modify, please feel free. Option to take your right arm forward, stretch your right side body. Option to float your right leg up, lift your hips even higher. Where is your breath? Can you feel it? Make it more powerful. Make it stronger. Take one more round. End of your exhale. Plank or modified plank. Inhale at the top. Exhale all the way to your belly. All right, this time we're gonna take shoulder pigeon. So right arm reaches straight out to the right with your palm face down. And if you want to intensify this, you guys, you can start to bend your right elbow. So you're slowly turning it into more of a goalpost position, your right arm. So just whatever works best for you. If your right arm stays straight out, that's perfectly fine. Roll over onto your right side body. And then take whatever variation you want to. So sometimes I like to bring my left arm behind me, wrap it around my low back. Sometimes I like to reach my left arm straight up and then straight back. Like I'm trying to touch the backs of my hands together. You can take a quad stretch or even hand to big toe pose. The left piece fingers around your left big toe and extend your left leg up. Lots of options. You've got about three to five more breaths. Soften your face. Make sure your head can rest against the ground. If that, if that can't happen for you, then use something under your head, a pillow, a block, a blanket. If you, wanna, if you want your head to feel supported in your neck. And last couple of rounds. Uh, slowly release roll to your belly and when you're on your belly take a moment in between sides so turn your head to the right to the other side and then just rest your arms down by your sides palms face up either just kind of shimmy your hips from side to side or if you want you can windshield wiper your shins a couple times breathe down into your low back And let's now set up for the other side. So left arm straight out to the left, palm faces the ground. If you want to intensify it, you can start to bend your left elbow just a little bit, or you can bring it into a full on cactus position. So it's up to you. It depends how deep you want to take it. The more you bend your elbow, the more that will take the stretch from your shoulder into your left pectoral muscle, that chest muscle. So up to you what feels most beneficial. 
and you guys know where to go. Roll onto your left side. Any variation you want to take. Head is relaxed either against the ground or a prop. And then just breathe. Bigger, more spacious breaths, about three or four more. So even though this is definitely more of a, I don't want to say it's restorative because there's still muscle energy happening, but it is more restorative. You're laying down, you're a little more relaxed. So rather than just tuning out and spacing out, going somewhere else, stay here, tune in. Notice your body. Notice those tight places. Breathe into them. Feel your breath as it moves through you. That life force energy. Last couple rounds on this side. Big, huge, full body breaths. And then as you're ready, just ease your way back to your belly. And same thing we did before. So turn your head to the left now. Arms by your sides, palms face up. This time, if you want, bend your knees and try egg beater. So rather than windshield wiper, you're circling your feet in opposite directions at opposite times. Just like a mixing bowl. It's like a mixer. Breathe into your low back. Good, you guys. All right, set your legs down. Bring your forehead to the ground so the back of your neck becomes long. Hands to your low back, interlace your fingers. Exhale all your air out. And as you inhale, lift everything up that you can. So chest lifts, legs lift. And if you're able to, lift your hands up with your fingers interlaced. Reach your knuckles back. Hug in with your inner thighs. Back of your neck stays long. So gaze slightly down, slightly forward. Breathe down into your belly. Hug in with your inner thighs even more. See if you can lift a little higher. Spread your toes one more inhale. And let it go. Release. Let's bring our hands to frame our mid ribs. Press up to tabletop. Take it back to child's pose. So knees wide or knees together. Hips to your heels. Forehead to your mat. Couple huge breaths. All right, lift up to hands and knees, find your way into a seat. And then we're going to take a seated hip opener today. So you guys all are pretty familiar, you know where to go, but let's do right on top of left, double pigeon fire log pose, or if you want to go for cow, cow face, right knee on top of left knee and sometimes I like to come forward to hands and knees to get that and then sit back so you're welcome to do uh, you're welcome to do that if you need to and then either pose knees stacked shin stacked if neither one of those is going to work for you then just keep your left foot on the ground with your knee bent outer right ankle to the top of your left thigh and then you can kind of lean back to take it deeper you'll scoot your heel towards your butt and bring your upper body closer to your legs. So your pose, your expression, if you're in double pigeon or cow face, either sitting up tall or folding forward. And as you fold forward, 
Keep both sit bones rooted as much as you can and imagine you wanna reach your butt back as your heart reaches forward. All variations, keep your ankles strong and a little flex through your toes. So that flex through your toes, what it does is it locks all your tendons and ligaments in place so that you're not just pulling on the tendons and ligaments. We don't wanna stretch our tendons and ligaments because they don't have recoil. It's like an elastic band. If you stretch it out, stretch it out, stretch it out, stretch it out, it stops getting small again. It stops getting tight again. So with our tendons and ligaments, we just want to keep, um, like if you use a foam roller, you want to keep that soft tissue around it nice and loose. But what we really want to work on stretching is our muscles, not the tendons, not the ligaments. We don't want to sink into our joints. So that is where alignment and awareness come in. It's so interesting to me because two people can be doing the exact same pose and it can look relatively the same, but something completely different can be happening on the inside. So that's where you check in with your form, with your alignment, what's going on inside of you. And then how might you adjust? How might you respond so that you can get more out of it for your own body? Take about three more breaths. If you are in a variation where you're folded forward, very end of your next exhale, just slowly roll it up. Head stacks at the top. And then let's lean back to come out of it. So hands behind you, lean back, uncross your legs, give them a little shake out. And then just a couple of times, windshield wipers. So feet on the ground with your knees bent, feet wider than your hips, and let your knees move from side to side. And as your knees move to the left, your right butt cheek can lift. As your knees move to the right, your left butt cheek can lift. So you don't have to stay rooted through both sit bones the entire time. One of my students thought that you did, and I had no idea, so I'm just going to make sure everyone knows. You can lift one butt cheek up and then the other butt cheek. All right, let's move to the other side. So left on top or opposite leg on top, whatever you did last time, do the opposite. Probably the same variation, but if this side feels a lot tighter or a lot more open, maybe you do go somewhere different. So double pigeon shin stacked. Make sure your outer ankle is on your inner knee, not your inner shin or your calf. So as soon as you bring your foot to your calf, the pose really is not the same at all. So you want your outer ankle, inner knee, or cow face, knees stacked, or the modification with your right foot on the ground. Sit up tall if you're in cow face or double pigeon. Fold forward if you would like. Reach your heart forward, reach your butt back, and then big breaths. A lot of times I notice when I'm really paying attention that in these hip openers, rather than kind of softening with each breath, I tend to tighten sometimes. I tend to resist a little bit more. I'm kind of just like holding out for it to be over. So rather if you do something similar, notice rather than tightening and resisting and waiting for the pose to be over be here fully and just surrender be with each breath as it happens bigger and deeper breaths take about three more Uh, if 
if you're in a forward fold position end of your next exhalation slowly uncurl your spine and rise up let's lean back again to come out of it uncross your legs shake them out we're going to take windshield wiper again but this time we'll take it from our back so lower all the way down onto your back feet to the ground with your knees bent feet wider than your hips cactus your arms tee out your arms up to you and then windshield wiper from side to side Feel the mobility in your hips, maybe up into your low back. Next time your knees fall to the right, keep them there for about three to five rounds. And if you'd like, you can bring the outer edge of your right foot to the outside of your left knee. up or over your left shoulder breathe down into your belly and then as you're ready just switch to the other side so knees over to the left possibly outer left foot to the outside of your right knee or thigh breathe gaze up or over your right shoulder And then when you feel just about even on both sides, bring your knees back up. For a moment, let both knees fall in. Keep your feet out wide. So deep inner spiral of your inner thighs, internal rotation of your femur bones inside the hip sockets. So I think most of you know this, but if you are a person that tends to walk a little bit more um, with your feet, with your toes out, your heels in, kind of duck footed, that's me. This is a wonderful, wonderful pose, just really restorative pose. It's called constructive rest pose. So next time you're watching TV or something like that, you might lay in this position for like seven to 10 minutes and just let your femur bones kind of settle into this position. So for me, this is honestly pretty uncomfortable. It does not feel natural, but I used to walk with my toes way, way out. And I have noticed through the years that that has become just a little bit less. So noticing your own imbalances is so, so valuable. And then how can we start to shift and create more balance from the inside out? If you wanna stay here longer, if this is feeling like it's benefiting you, then stay here as long as you want. You might switch it up, feet together, knees apart. You might come into a happy baby pose. So just give yourself about five to 10 breaths to complete your practice. So if there's an inversion you wanna take, if there is one last heart opener we didn't do a ton of heart openers today so maybe you want to take a bridge pose or something like that and then just slowly begin transitioning into your final relaxation So I have a reading for you or a quote for you, and it's a, it's 
a little bit different to me. It's a little more cheesy than my usual, but I love it. It's by Jen Sincero. She wrote the book, um, You Are a Badass. She just says, you are perfect. To think anything less is as pointless as a river thinking that it's got too many curves or that it moves too slowly or that it's rapids are too rapid. Says who? You are on a journey with no defined beginning, middle, or end. There are no wrong twists or turns. There is just being. And your job is to be as you as you can be. This is why you are here. To shy away from who you truly are would leave the world you-less. You are the only one, you are the only you there is and that there ever will be. I repeat, you are the only you there is and ever will be. Do not deny the world its one and only chance to bask in your brilliance. So you are the only you there ever will be. Do not deny the world its one and only chance to bask in your brilliance. Do not deny yourself your one and only chance to bask in your brilliance. So for these last few moments, just rest. Just bask in you, in who you are, in what's inside of you, and what you feel. And I will bring you out of Shavasana in just a few minutes so you can stay with me or if you want to turn off your Zoom and just close your practice for yourself when you're ready, I am not offended at all. So whatever works best for you this morning, give yourself these last few moments to just be.
deep breath in. Exhale, let it go. And just slowly bring small, gentle movements or even big, gentle movements back into your body. As you feel ready, roll to either side, fetal position. Take a moment resting on your side body, breathing into your back body. And then using the strength in your arms, guide yourself up into a seat. So right where we began, sit up nice and tall, close your eyes, exhale in your breath, inhale, sweep your arms out, around and up, just gather in all the efforts, all the energy from our practice today, bring it all into your heart, hands to heart. Thank you guys so much for joining me, for letting me guide you. The light in me sees and honors the light in you. Namaste.